Welcome to Supercompute 2024 here in Atlanta, Georgia. That would be SC24. I'm here with Seamus Jones from Dell. I'm Dave Nicholson with 6.5 on the road, and we're going to talk about something that is critically important. It's sort of a foundational discussion uh, underneath everything that we're talking about here uh, from an AI, supercomputing, high-performance computing perspective. It's this idea of sustainability. Sustainability takes on all sorts of different angles, but what I want to do, Seamus, is, is um, if you can, have us walk through Dell's view of sort of the sustainability life cycle. Yeah. Uh, what does that look like for you, starting with the design of the systems themselves? Absolutely. So from a sustainability perspective, Dell has a complete vision. Right? It's very important to us from the life cycle of the products, even from inception, transport, usage, so the usage model. When we look at the usage model today, a lot of the emissions that are derived uh, deliver greenhouse gases. And those gases are really the big concern for scope three cat 11 results. Um, so those are uh, based on the CSRD uh, reporting that companies have to do for Okay, their... back up a second. Scope, sure. scope what? Let's uh... Scope three, cat yeah. 11, right? Okay. It's talking about emissions okay. of all the products. So how much greenhouse gas emissions that okay. are derived. And when you look at the use cycle of each of the products, mm -hmm. uh, like your laptop or your, your AI system that's drawing 12,000 kilowatts, right. as with a heck of a lot more than the laptop. So on the AI platforms, they're going to be drawing a lot more power and generating a lot more greenhouse gases, roughly 20 times more, okay? So it's critically important for us from an engineering organization to really develop platforms that are efficient and using all the energy to power and not all the energy to cool. So the, we kind of bifurcate that, that usage. So you think about the energy it takes to cool the system, because when we use compute, Right, it generates heat. We have to dissipate that heat in some way, right. and that takes energy. Right. So one of the things that we're trying to do well, in the design of the systems, we use, like in the air-cooled design, we we have multi-vector cooling. We're using telemetry data from the iDRAC to make sure that our fan cycles are spinning based on AI algorithms of the applications that are operating on the system at the time, and it's critical that they actually do that real time, not just on a cycle. That's why when Dell as a system, when you spin up a Dell server, if you talk to any administrator, the first thing they do, they spike, right? All sure. the fans cycle on, so that way we know everything is operational. But guess what? Then it comes down to a, a reasonable level until the workload starts to happen. And as that, as that increases and decreases, then the fan speeds and the power consumption change. So we make it as efficient as possible for the usage model. One of the big things on the next generation power edge, so the 17th generation platforms, it has iDRAC 10, okay? iDRAC 10 is the engine that's driving all that telemetry data. It has double the amount of processing cores as the previous generation product. Okay. And it needs that, right? Because the AI inferencing that's happening on the system, um, not necessarily that the work it's doing, but within the telemetry data, understanding, manipulating that, telemetry data for the iDRAC means that we're getting all these input points, thousands of input inputs from the system uh, criteria. So fans, temperature, thermal controls, inlet and exhaust temperatures. And all that is uh, developed, it, it develops algorithms, like things, like things over time, right? Okay. We can see what happens. So we know how to make those changes. Okay, so it's not just the, the intelligent design of the hardware itself. Yeah. Engineering goes into that to make it more efficient. But if I'm hearing what you're saying correctly, you're setting up sort of a virtuous cycle where you're, you're leveraging the AI that is that has its own insatiable desire for power. You're, you're leveraging the AI to make all of this stuff more efficient Absolutely. at that level. Yes. So once you've, you've done the best you can to design in efficiency to the hardware, now you're using this intelligence that the hardware is actually powering to make it more clever. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, right? Sustainable AI, it also comes from AI for sustainability. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's you're using AI to make our systems more intelligent so that we can give customers better control. And we do that through the iDRAC, we do that through Open Managed Enterprise, we do that through AI ops 
uh, infrastructure observability, which has power management within that cycle, as well as forecasting to see what are your greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint. So I can forecast looking at if I make this change in my data center, if I refresh these platforms, let's say, for example, the latest generation of PowerEdge, right, with the Turin CPUs, you can replace seven legacy platforms with one PowerEdge Turin based platform. And as a consequence, uh, that generates a lot less heat, takes up a lot less space in a rack. So it's a seven to one consolidation. Relatively, because, yeah. if, because if you track the amount of power that we have to have going to each of these racks, that keeps going up. Exactly. So it's, so it's this never ending, ho hopefully, I mean, seriously, at this point, we haven't, we haven't proven the end state of this that it's in fact a truly virtuous cycle. So as a society, we're, 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 we're having discussions about where this power is all gonna come from. Yeah. It sounds like Dell is trying to be the best steward of everything in the middle yeah. to make sure you get the best results coming out the end that are possible. Yeah, it is, it, it's undeniable, okay, that racks that are driving up to a megawatt of power yeah. in the future, it's insane. right? I mean, we're, we're going that direction. Today, a lot of customers at 12 and a half, maybe 15 kilowatts. Right. Okay. And even in our own data centers, some of them are 12 and a half, 15 kilowatts. And we're having to adapt those to be able to accommodate things like the XE 9680. Um, and that's why we're developing platforms like the XE 7740 and the XE 7745. Those are PCIe based uh, GPU platforms. So we can fit eight GPUs in PCIe based. And it means that you can get more energy efficiency in those if you don't necessarily need the performance of the XC9680 with eight SXM GPUs. So it's PCIe versus SXM. And the biggest thing for me is that an important feature with the Dell relationship with the customer is right-sizing the environment. We have a huge portfolio of products and customers are still trying to figure out when can I do C inferencing on a CPU only? Yeah. And when can I do inferencing on a GPU? Or when do I need multiple systems with multiple GPUs in a, in a mesh to do distributed inferencing, training, or fine tuning? Do you, do you think we're at a point where people can have that rational conversation? I, I would argue that a year ago, we were smack in the middle of fear of missing out. Yeah. And the only answer was, I need the most expensive GPUs I can get my hand on, mm -hmm. my hands on, and I'm gonna go line up like it's a sale at Walmart on Black Friday yeah. to try yeah. to get my hands on them, and then I'll figure out what I'll do with them later. Yeah. Are, are, do, you, do you think people are willing to take a breath now and have a rational conversation with Dell about, about kind of, uh, call it tiering their infrastructure? for lack of a better term? We're meeting people where their need lies. And those customers that have, were early adopters of that technology, they are definitely ones taking advantage of it and proposing it to so sometimes their customers, these, these CSPs, cloud service providers, mm -hmm. things like that. What we're seeing now is the, the midstream adoption from a, a standard enterprise like a, a lawyer's firm, right? That's saying, okay, I need to sort through all of these documents and I'd like to do it on a LLM, that's an agentic RAG deployment. How best to do that in an efficient way for my, for my estate? Because I want to keep all those legal documents on premise and I want, I want a Gen AI uh, framework to be able to take advantage of all this goodness. How do I go about doing that? That's where we, we can come in and give them options because they don't necessarily need the row rack and, right. and, and framework that, um, you know, the large players might be doing today. Yeah, so. so I know you've been in this in this game for long enough to, to have been exposed to hot aisle, cold aisle, raised floor. Yeah. We gotta keep things cool. But come on, 10 years ago, we didn't think in terms of thermal density as a primary consideration. No. Um, I, I was curious maybe a year ago and I randomly looked up how much heat do you have to dissipate when you pump a kilowatt of power or a kilowatt hour of power into a GPU? And the answer was basically all of it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. with the yeah. exception of mechanical energy uh, from the fans, Yep. Um, you're talking about a nearly perfect transfer of electrical energy into heat energy yeah. that then has to be dissipated. Um, 
talked to a lot of different, you know, the, it is like the wild frontier when it comes to um, direct liquid cooling technology. There's all sorts of variants of it. Some come in at varying temperatures and go out at hotter temperatures. Yep. Uh, how much is Dell looking at what can be done over the short term, long term, to recover energy from now that hot water or you know that hot liquid yeah. that's coming out. I mean, if you look at, there's a lot of different strategies within our liquid cooling solutions, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, everything from liquid air assisted cooling, everything from direct to chip liquid cooling. Okay. Um, there, there are different technologies, different implementations. There's also rear door heat exchangers to try and understand that. You also have uh, warm water heat capture cabinets, so that way you can capture that hot air, which is really 100% more efficient than exhausting air out of the out of the facility. We're actually capturing it, the hot air, recycling it back through the system, okay. and, and cooling it in that process and then recycling it. It means that what we're able to do is, there's a, there's a dynamic shift that's happening in customers' environments. These are choices that the customer has to make not only in the data center, but in the facility. And it makes a really big difference uh, when, they're, when they're tied into facility planning. Because from a sustainability perspective, you don't want to have a process in place that burns even more greenhouse gases, right? So you don't want to have take that hot air or hot water, that's, that, uh, that cooling fluid that's coming out of the back end of the server, and then taking it external to the building, like taking that with a secondary loop, going external to the building, and then having to cool that with an air conditioner. Think about that, right. like your house, right. right? An air conditioner is generating more greenhouse gas emissions, right? So more carbon footprint. Yeah. So how much better would that be if the facility was able to do a cooling tower? Yeah. I mean, if you're based in Seattle, right, versus Austin, Texas, right? right? You can do cooling towers to just take it outside, use natural you know, cooling of the environment and bring it back in and inlet temperature. Yeah. So anytime you can do things like that that are unique and different to the customer, and it's very, very bespoke to each customer. And that's where we can help. Yeah, one thing that might be hard for Dell to test being headquartered in and around Austin yeah. is the idea of, uh, let's find a day when it's not 95 degrees and humid that's so we true. can test these things. So did you ever think, I mean, now, now, now everybody's cool with the idea of liquids in the data center, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So yeah. why not just have hot, tub, hot tubs in the data center? Why don't we just have, why don't we just directly heat hot yeah. tubs so, yeah. I, so IT people who have been toiling in obscurity can relax? You, you, you laugh about that, okay? But in I'm our serious, lab, I smile, but I'm serious. In our lab, one row of our AI platforms yeah. generates the heat for the, for the lab space that we all work in. Yeah. Before we had installed our XE9680s, it was freezing in that yeah. room. It was about 15 degrees colder than it should have been. Once we installed it, it's comfortable space. Yeah, well, it, there, was a, there was a time when you, when you would have been criticized for that being a luxury hot tub in the yeah. data center. Yeah. Now, now it, it is part of the sustainability. It's true. It would be relaxing efforts. at best. You know, yeah. it just would be, I, we'd never get uh, engineers to leave, to be honest. So I'm sure you've heard the phrase that if something can't be measured, it didn't happen. Yep. You know, it's like basic science. If you, you know, the difference between observation and science is writing it down. Yeah. Um, it's all great to talk about Dell and sustainability, but if I'm a Dell customer, mm -hmm. how do I quantify that? How do I, how do I, how do I prove to my board, yep. who is very interested in ESG initiatives, absolutely, um, that we're actually making progress? Uh, and progress from what? How do we baseline it? How do we measure it? Especially at this time of year, right. coming end of year, end of year results, that ESG initiative and approaching their 2030 goals, the environmental 2030 goals. A lot of companies need what's called a PCF report. So a product carbon footprint report. Okay. Dell provides those for every product, whether it's a monitor, laptop, uh, XC9680 with eight GPUs, or any of the other products within our portfolio. Those can be acquired at Dell.com. If you if they submit a ticket, right up based on the configuration of the system, it'll be detailed. It'll be following the, the, the uh, product passport uh, initiative. That's a global initiative to understand what the greenhouse gas emissions are based on the components, the full life cycle of the product, even right out to decommissioning. 
So it's one of those things, it's understanding, okay, what's gonna be the greenhouse gas emission? So that way, how are they approaching their 2030 goals or 2050 goals, depending on, on their current ESG initiatives? It makes an incredible amount of sense, not just for tracking things from an environmental perspective, yeah. but from a cost efficiency perspective, because mm -hmm. ultimately these things are, you're gonna be able to slice them and dice them into how much work per watt hour of power are we generating and ge how much CO2, but without the data, uh, you're kind of lost. So I, I would think that that's something that every customer should tap into uh, to at least get started with a baseline. So what do you think the future holds? What's the, wh where, where, where is this headed? Uh, are, you, are you personally confident that, um, that this virtuous cycle is going to lead? I'll, I'll tell you, in one of, one of my classes that I teach, someone brought up the point that their friends who are not IT savvy we're very skeptical about the idea that AI was going to deliver us from all evil. And um, because what's being pitched here, you know, we've kind of got delusional optimism here at SC24. Yeah. Uh, what's being pitched is that, yeah, we might be doing something short term that's not great. We're gonna have to dig a bunch of holes and build a bunch of power plants yeah. and do all this stuff. But eventually the intelligence, the insights we get from AI will drive us to a, to a brighter, greener future. Yeah. Um, I believe in that. I agree. Do you do you think do you I, think we're headed there? I th I think today, what's happening is that we have this we have this requirement and need for more power, and any source of more power today to drive the AI platforms is where we need to look. If we can find long term sustainable energy sources, then it doesn't matter how much energy each of the system is using if it's coming from a sustainable energy source right? Nuclear or wind or, but today we need that availability and it's just not there on our, on our grids nationwide and, and really across the world. I think AI will help us deliver that. I think there's some really unique implementations that we've never seen before. I mean, things like the ability to, dr to drill into uh, the, the, the crust of the earth and use uh, evaporating air and evaporating water to then drive turbines. Um, it's, it's some really interesting stuff that we've seen today at SC. Yeah. And the thing is that um, I don't know which one's gonna take hold, which one's gonna be most impactful. Uh, it is undeniable that AI is driving this resource and a need. Um, how we're gonna impact it, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, well the good news is Dell typically has every horse in every race. Yeah, so whichever true. ones uh, do well, then uh, Dell does well and we all do well. Uh, I do have a final comment, and I'm gonna say this on your behalf too, Seamus, so hope you forgive me. But I'm gonna look directly in the camera and say, ha, infrastructure matters and is very cool. And yeah. all of, and I know business outcomes sounds great. Yeah, we want business outcomes. Yeah, people shouldn't care. Shouldn't care about how the service is provided. Yeah. The fact is, correct me if I'm wrong, it's increasingly important Absolutely. to get at the very foundation of these things when you're deploying this stuff. It's becoming and more important. And that's kind of fun for guys like us, isn't yeah, it? it is. Come Absolutely. on, come on. We're, yeah. a little, we, we're, we're a little gleeful about yeah. this. Yeah, this, this show this year has become bigger than ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good stuff, Seamus. Seamus, Seamus Jones from Dell, thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, yeah, sustainability in AI, sustainability in all things related to compute, it's gonna be front and center. You're gonna hear all sorts of philosophical, political, societal debates about where we get the power. I'm, I'm from California. I'm a big fan of the thermonuclear reactor in the sky that we call the sun. Uh, but I imagine it's gonna be a whole mix of, uh, of other power sources. Uh, for for Seamus Jones from Dell, I'm Dave Nicholson, 6.5 on the road. Thanks for joining us here at Supercompute 2024.